Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new here. If so, make sure you like and subscribe down below so you don't miss more Japan related content. But in today's video, I'm going to basically be giving you a rundown of the application process for a Japanese language school through Gogo Nihon. I did previously do one of these, but I kind of like filmed it at 5am in the morning and it was kind of like shock and bad. So we're just going to do another one here today, hopefully a lot better this time. But with that said, let's get on into the video. Okay guys, so the first thing you need to do is obviously go onto the Gogoniahan website. I will probably link it down below, so check it out if you want to. But once you get onto the Gogoniahan website, they have a list of options at the top. They have schools, online courses, study trips, accommodations, frequently asked questions, testimonials, blog, about us and store. But for today, for today we're going to go into schools. And then once you click schools, there is language schools, vocational schools, university and online schools. But today we're going to be talking about language schools because that's what I know about. Um, they do also have language schools all throughout Japan. Um, they have them in Tokyo, like a lot of in Tokyo. They have 11 in Tokyo. They have one school in Yokohama. They have one school in Kofu. And guys, yes, I do realise I'm saying these names all wrong. So do forgive me. Um, they have three schools in Osaka, they have two schools in Kyoto, uh, they have one school in Fukuoka, two schools in Sapporo, oh that one's really bad I bet you anything, <laughs> they have one school in Kyobe and, oh forgive me I have absolutely no idea, Oita, Oita, oh that's really bad I'm sorry, but they have one school there and they are all the schools they have. Um, as you can see, they have a load of them. The last one, oh my god, really badly pronounced, but that's okay. Um, I am personally going to be going to school in Osaka. So where is it gone? So I will be going to one of these schools. Obviously, I'm not going to reveal which one it is because, you know, personal, personal safety. Although I probably did narrow it down for any weirdos out there. <laughs> I know, um, but once you do um, pick where you're going, like Osaka, Tokyo, um, whatever it is, you can then click into a school. We're going to go with this one just because it's the first one. So you can read all about it. The school intensity is obviously just how many hours they do. It gives you school introductions, um, why you use Gogo Nihon, and then down below um, it gives the prices for each like three months six months 12 months all of that so they are there these this school only does three six and twelve i know some do 24 and nine months as well um these also have um the term breakdowns so they basically go april july october they all va vary depending on schools and you also have weekday classes and they are morning class or afternoon my personal experience is with the school I'm going to. I don't know about this one now because it could be completely different. But I found that the beginners are going later in the day and not in the morning. The mornings are more for the more advanced people. And I'd say that is probably due to um, the morning people probably are working more. So they want to leave all afternoon. So people who need to work and have the Japanese skills to be working normal hours would be working all throughout the day and people who have very little Japanese probably won't be working throughout the day and I'd say that's why my school went with that way I do not know about any other schools but yes anyways um the schools also do help you with a whole lot of stuff like this one in particular support finding full-time employment part-time job support access to beginner students and there is all just little, little things that they help you with but i do advise just checking on whichever school you're going to and see what they help you with because all of them will vary again and at the very very bottom it will sorry no it will say start your application now so once you start your application you just fill in all of this information here and click next and it will send it off to them 
they will then email you back. And in my experience um, with GoGoney Han, they set up my profile and then they gave me a one-time password that I changed. So I only have access to the account, but the account was set up through GoGoney Han. But yes, let's now go into what happens when your account is set up. So we just log in here. So obviously now I do have a lot of this blocked off because I can't tell you where my school, what my name of school is or anything of that. So yeah, <laughs> sorry, but that's blocked off. Um, I have 18 days now from when filming this to pay my tuition. Oh, I don't, I don't like that kind of money going out of my bank account. Oh, Lord help my soul. But this down here is the communication box. So as you can see here, I have a basically discount for doing online school stuff um, because as you can see here, it's kind of like emergency situation and they don't have any updates on whether I can leave or not. So I think they're doing an online school thing, which I personally won't be doing because I, I don't, this sounds silly in some ways, but not in other ways. I do not want to learn any Japanese before I go. Obviously, like, Chloe, that's stupid. Why would you not want to know Japanese? Like, you want to know Japanese before you go. But the thing is, I don't want to learn it for the sake of pronunciation, because if I get into a way of saying that I go over there and like it's completely wrong then I'm gonna have to correct that and knowing me I will completely mispronounce everything and I do not want that do not want that to happen because I'm taking a step forward to take two steps back and try to get out of a habit which is extremely difficult to break a habit so I do not want to do that so I'm just not going to be taking those classes um so yes but this is the communication box there's documents here that Gogoni Han shared with me that this school shared with them. So here I have information before entrance. I have permission of admission certificate, which is basically just my acceptance to the school. I have my invoice down here. And this is a homestay thing. Basically, um, there was a offer going on that, um, I don't know, it's discounted or some, and that they would make um, the dates completely flexible because, you know, it's kind of hard to know when you're going to be there and then you might have to pay fees, but through the homestay, you won't have to pay the fees. So they were given that option, but I'm getting accommodation through my school, so the school is already completely flexible with that. So I don't need to worry. And then this is the online course that I could be doing, which... I just have to I obviously didn't reply to them they sent it on to me four times and then this is the refund policy that I talked about in my last video my like Q&A for the preparations I made for Japan but that is that so that is your home page you then have your personal information um, I will go into all of these because I can somehow find a way to block it all off but just ask for your first name, your middle name, your surname, uh, gender, marital status, state of birth, your age, place of birth, country, city. Um, do you have a valid passport, passport number, passport expiry date, current occupation? And then under that it goes a current residential address and then it goes phone number address city or town, um, state of preference, postal code, country, um, and then lend to study. Um, how how long will you be applying for? Which I said one year. Ideally, how long in total would you like to study in study Japanese in Japan? I said two years because two years was the max. Like I know one YouTuber, Mikan, she applied for a one year one and got a two year one. So it's like, hmm, I'll try my luck. <laughs> And then it also says family member information. Do you have any family members living in Japan? And for me, I unfortunately do not. So I just answered no to that. I'm sorry, I do also have a really, really itchy nose. I do not know why. Um, but on to number three, application fee. As far as I'm aware, this application fee did get taken out of my school's invoice. So um, it's not that bad. I'm not just paying to apply. It comes off of the school fees. Um, but the product application fee for my school 
and then description payment of application fee must be successful before you will be able to submit your application. Um, the currency is in Japanese yen and the amount was 31,300 yen. Um, I will put the amount in your hair and probably US dollars over here. Um, so yes, and then it just says I paid. So on to number four, Japanese language experience. Um, it just said, what type of studies was it? Or sorry, have you ever studied Japanese before? Yes. What type of studies was it? Self studies. Did you use any specific books? Genki, I do have the Genki book and workbook, but I, I just stopped using it because I know I will mispronounce stuff and I'm not, I'm not going forward to go back. <laughs> I know basic, basic stuff, so yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I studied a bit and no greetings, Hiragana and most of Katakana, as well as how to introduce myself, but also a little bit of time. Um, I, I barely know time. Um, maybe a little one or two things. I think I took one or two lessons, um, but that was it. <laughs> How many hours? And then I said 101 to two hours. Um, so I was studying for years, but like it was all very repetitive. So I'm just gonna say that I don't know enough to say anymore. Um, when did your study start? Um, I just, I've made up a random date and I didn't put an end date in because I've no end date. Um, have you ever passed a level of JLY, JLY, JLPT, which is just a proficiency test for the Japanese language? And I have not. And then how many kanji are you able to read and understand? I am able to stare. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the lowest 20 to 50. I don't know a single one. <laughs> um what is your plan after graduation i was thinking about going to college there but like i don't know if college is for me so we'll see um and then it says which color slash university you major i have no idea so left a blank um what's your purpose for studying japanese in japan 100 words i mentioned japanese culture so i want to become proficient in japanese so i can live slash work slash study there that's a lot of slashes. <laughs> but anyways, on to number five. Financial supporter information. It says complete this form at the top. It says please fill out the company information section with your place of employment details if you're self-sponsoring or or your sponsor's employment information. You can only be a self-sponsor if you have been working full time for the past two years. So um, as you can see, that blows me out of being my own self sponsor because I've been working part time for the last like four, five ish years, maybe. So I'm fully um, paying for this myself, but I have to go through my father because I haven't worked full time for two years, but I've worked part time for four years, four or five years and I can pay it up myself. Yeah. I was basically working full-time hours in TY though, but that was like three years ago, maybe. So, it will. And then the other one is provide financial documents proving that you can support you in Japan. Proving that they can support you in Japan. Um, I can provide all those documents saying I can support myself, but because I haven't been working full-time, I, I, I find that a little bit silly if I do say so myself because if you got the money you got the money why do you have to work full time for it I don't understand but anyways financial supporter information obviously again it most of it's blocked off because personal information but I'm going to read the questions out okay it says who will finance your study in Japan my financial sponsor because the options are my financial sponsors or I will myself Financial sponsor's full name, Sean Quirk, because that's my dad. Um, financial sponsor's relation to you, my father. Financial sponsor's address, private. <laughs> and then it's asked for the sponsor's phone number, a home phone number, and then sponsor's annual income, the currency. Um, it moves on then to monthly support amount in Japan. Um, goes on to method of support and how will you spend your money in Japan. Reason for sponsorship, and I just made up some BS saying that like, sorry, 
that my dad knows how much I've wanted to go and so he's gonna sponsor me like no <laughs> I'm paying for myself um then the company my dad works for um the company phone number the role in the company my dad has the company address and then the company description so after that we move on to section six it says you and Japan in the past this is just basically asking if you've ever traveled to Japan um how long was it in that so it says visits to Japan please provide information for all your visits to Japan for each visit the corresponding passport stamps must be provided if they were in an old password you know how long or have please let us know visa visa via private message to your communication box which was the thing that i showed you in the very beginning in the little corner down here um just yeah um then it says when uploading your stamps please upload a photo slash scan of the full passport page failure to declare all trips to japan may affect your visa application if you have never been to Japan before, please skip this section. I have been to Japan once, which was to see if I actually liked it. Um, because I don't think it was the best idea to just go, yeah, I want to go to Japan, jump there. Obviously, some people do, nothing against that. Um, but my parents really wanted me to see Japan. It was kind of like a way to lure me out of going, <laughs> but it just made me want to go more. Um, so I just submitted that um it says a reason for travel i said to get a real sense of the culture and see if i really wanted to study in japan which is completely the truth and i said from date 29th to 12th 2019 to the 8th of the 1st 2020 so just before the pandemic oh my god but apparently coronavirus was um in japan at that stage and me and my mum and my sister went to oh, where is it they have should be should Shibuya, mm, Shibuya 109, sorry I know I'm butchering all these names, but they have that there, um, it's the busiest, busiest walking street, oh my god, I don't even know, the white and black stripes on the ground, busiest one of those, <laughs> lads my mind is in a fog at the moment, but anyways. We're going to move on to question number seven. And I meant to say we went there for the New Year's countdown. <laughs> and it was absolutely packed. But anyways, question number seven, or section number seven is, um, you and Japan in the past, C-O-N-T? C-O-N-T. Oh my God, okay. Maybe continue, continued. Um, please provide, please complete the form. This section is a continuation of the previous visit from Japan. Okay, yeah, continuation. Um, it just asks, have you ever applied for a Japanese long-term visa, student, work, working holiday, etc.? No, I have not. And then, have you ever been denied a Japanese visa? No. Criminal record or in Japan or overseas? Nope. And then departures by deportation slash departure, order or not? I just said no. Um, so that is all submitted. And then on to section number eight, um, your educational history. This just goes, please, please provide details of all the schools you've attended, primary, elementary, high school, higher education, even if you did not complete your studies. Please start from grade one. Do not include nursery or kindergarten. Japanese immigration looks at, the at this extremely closely. Please ensure that the dates are accurate Ooh, and reflect on what appears on your diploma, diploma or your degree. I can tell you a fact, my high school or my primary school definitely were not accurate. I just got around dates that they normally start. <laughs> Oops. Any whoosies. Um, it goes, your educational history, it asks for the school type, the school name, the school location, city, state, slash province, country, um, normal number of years to graduate this type of school, and then how many years did you attend, start date, end date, and I just have two down here, I have my primary school, slash elementary, and then I have high school, which is secondary school over here, 
um, normal is eight years, and I attended eight. Then normal is six years, but you can do five, and it is six years I attended. Five years because um, everybody has the option to skip TY. It's like a transition year. It's not compulsory, but I just did it anyways. <laughs> and then quite your section number nine, your personal background. So um, just please fill in the details below. This is publishing the personal background form. Education continued. Do you have any gaps in your education? If so, please describe. I just said NA because it's not applicable. I do not. Um, if you skipped or retook a year, please give us some inf information. I said NA, not applicable because I didn't either. Section number 10, health. Um, okay, so how is your health overall? Mine is normal. It's not bad, but it's not very good. Um, and then it goes, are you currently undergoing treatment for any health issues? I just said no, but I take vitamin D tablets, but like, what's vitamin D in like, large scale, so I just tell them no, it's fine. Um, are you currently taking any prescribed medicines? Did you take any prescribed medicines in the last year? Prescribed vitamin D, but I said no. Maybe you shouldn't, oh, but oh well. It's fine. It's fine. And then on to section number 11, your working experience. Um, just go, this just as please include all the jobs you've had since ending your studies. Make sure to specify whether the enrollment time was part time or full time for each job. Um, I've just had the one job for four to five years part time. It's Lifeguard swim teaching and receptionist and cleaner all under the one job. <laughs> so yes, very fun. Um, but it goes your working experience, the company name and address, job title and briefing description and duties, um, start date, leaving date, was this full time or part time? On to section number 12, emergency contacts. This asks, please fill in as many as you want. Add your emergency. <laughs> Emergency? <laughs> Emergency contact details here. You only need to have one contact, but you're welcome to add more if you wish. Emergency contact one must be a parent or family member. Emergency contact two can be anybody who can contact you easily. Um, emergency contact details. Full name, contact number, relationship, address, and email address. On to section number 13. Document upload. This does have quite a few guidelines. So uploading supporting documents. Upload your document using the form below to submit and com when completed. If you are not sure what documents to submit or are unable to submit one of these documents, please ask your coordinator. For students applying to future terms, some documents are time sensitive. New versions of these documents like bank statements may be requested later on. Three months students only upload your passport ID and personal photo unless told by your coordinator. Important document guidelines. Documents not in English should be provided with short translations on the document itself via edits or text boxes. Self sponsors, please upload your own bank statement and proof of income. Applicants un using a sponsor please upload their bank statement and their proof of income. The bank statement minimum requirement is 1 million yen, I believe. Yeah, I'm not good with numbers. Uh, equivalent. Diploma, please upload your latest diploma only. Um, I never got any diplomas because they are not a thing in secondary school when you graduate. Um, the personal photo should be passport style, white, even background, no strong shadows. Oh my lord, guys. I need to show you my, I'll probably insert a picture, but the shadow on my face on my photo is unreal. I didn't even realise until it came. I was like, oh my god. You can't see half of my face on it, which is so bad. But anyways, um, the scans are preferred. If you do not have access to a scanner, so 
apps such as Tap Scanner or Genius Scan allow you to edit photos taken from your phone. I use Tap Scanner and it is really good, so I do recommend that. And then it just, I have a whole lot of things here. Um, so I have the passport ID page, personal photo, bank statement, school diploma, um, proof of annual income, um, signed refund policy, then other letter of explanation for school graduation form. Um, apparently, um, they take the school graduation form as a sign that you have graduated, but I never had a graduation because of COVID and graduation form things are only like a novelty over here. So the way we know that we've graduated is the leaving cert results, but they don't have any like school names or anything on them. So I have to send in a letter as well as my leaving cert results to say that um, it's a completely different system that we don't get graduation forms. And this is how you know I graduated and everything. I have to explain all of that. So that's what that is. And other down here is the invoice that I need to pay in 18 days. And then other is permission. So basically, Gogoni Han put these in here. They did the invoice. They put permission for admission certificate and information before entrance. So they were all put in by them. So we can both upload into this section. And that is basically it other than submit your application and then you're all done um but i do gotta say the information before entrance permission for admission certificate and invoice as well as the refund policy and the letter of graduation i did not need to put those in to submit it they were after it being submitted and there was more questions so you do you do need to upload more documents and everything when you submit it it's not over when you submit it so you do regularly need to check this and check your gmail because everything will come through there as well it normally says after a while after everything is set up on your application um it normally just says new comment in communication box which was um one sec we go back up to home the communication box is this yo care so that is everything guys thank you for watching and if you made it this far comment go go nihon down below thank you